to Ms. Chow's biology lecture. In this unit of biotechnology, we will start off with the history of genetic engineering. The objective is that students will be able to understand the history of breeding and how it led to the current genetic engineering that we have today. And we work with biotechnology to get there, and biotechnology is the use of technology to change the genetic makeup of living things for human purposes. So we're going to start off with breeding. Um, it has been documented in the Egyptian days that uh, there were pets as domesticated cats. Um, even before then, humans have taken wild animals, uh, such as the wolf, and domesticated them throughout the years and bred them to have different features. Here we have ancient Asiatics and a plethora group of European age breeds. So breeding, there are three different types of breeding that we're going to talk about. First type is selective breeding, where us humans are choosing species for their specific traits. For example, the dogs. Uh, we can look at dogs because we have so many varieties. So how dogs have come from a common lineage yet look so different. Here we have an example of a Great Dane right next to, I believe, a terrier. And then we also see how these two dogs look so starkly different um, from a Siberian Husky, which is more closer in lineage to today's common wolf. Plants and animals are also selected. For what? Well, for honeybees, are selected to bread for the most type of honey. So at one point a human found a certain type of bees produce more honey and to our advantage we chose those bees to start new bee hives thus we have produced honeybees. Corn also is very common uh, staple in our diet. Um, back thousands of years when we started cultivating corn first looked like this piece of graph here, teosintin, teosintin, which the kernels are on the inside. Throughout the years, they have selected corn in which the kernels got bigger. Not only bigger, they are now on the outside. Carrots and well have also been selected, as you can tell the wide varieties of colors. Um, the seeds were selected based on the genetic um, variation of colors. The mustard, the wild mustard itself. Here you have the wild mustard. From the wild mustard, throughout many generations of these plants, they have this selective net to be different kinds of vegetables. So the cauliflower here, um, they have been selected to have sterile flowers, and then you have broccoli, which um, will have suppression of flower development, so it doesn't quite go to bloom. Then we have the cabbage, suppression of internal length, so it's stunted. And we have the kale, which is the same thing as mustard, except the leaves are bigger and uh, the kohlrabi, Enhancement of Lateral Veristerns. The third type is inbreeding, breeding in the same species. Now it's very important that inbreeding are only successful with similar genotypes. If the genotype are too divergent, then the species won't be able to have successful, successful offspring. So what does inbreeding cause? Um, it will incur a lot of recessive diseases. Uh, let's take dogs again as an example, since it is well documented. Sharpays, like this cute little Sharpe here, has amyldosis, which can lead to kidney failure. On top of that, due to their physical features, they have skin rashes from their folds. And then we have the Doberman Pinscher. They can have narcolepsy, which means uh, either they're really tired or when they're really excited, they can just go straight to sleep. And then the fourth type is outbreeding and hybridization, crossing of distantly related organisms. 
This is an example of a liger. Ligers, when a lion is bred with a tiger, the offspring is called a liger, and some of the offspring can be sterile, and some of the offsprings may be, be able to have their own offspring. However, mules, on the other hand, are a hybrid of a donkey and a horse. Mules, most of the time, are going to be sterile. Very rare they'll have uh, a mule that is, or able to, re very rarely they will have a mule that is able to produce, and that is if they are mating with a horse. Seed banks. So with all this breeding that we do, and selective breeding, and now these days we are genetically altering uh, plants and animals, um, there must be some way where we can save the variation that happens naturally as well. So um, they have started focused with plants since seeds are easier to maintain and store and have a longer lifespan than an embryo, for instance. Um, the Savard Global Seed Vault, which is located in Sweden, saves genetic variation. So here is an example how they store the seeds. These large pillars, each one ha contains thousands and hundreds of thousands of seeds and this is stored in a dry and cold area that prevents the process of germination. We want to maintain it to be stored. So how do they maintain that? Um, here is our artist's rendition of the Savard Global Sea Vault. There is an entrance in about 300 yards into the mountain. That means if the temperature also changes on the outside, it is well insulated on the inside of the rocks. How many seeds does it have? In 2009, it had over 20 million seeds. That was 2009. Today we are in 2013. Quite impressive. And that is the end for how we will lead into genetic engineering of the history. In the next video, we will talk about the uses of pipetting.